Hi everyone, welcome back to Operations Research. This is our third course, and today we're going to talk more about theory. Today our topics will be Lagrange duality and the KKD condition. So these, as we will show, are methods or methodologies that we may use to analyze nonlinear programs. So we will first talk about Lagrange relaxation which is a useful tool for us to deal with constraint optimization problems. And then we will follow this idea to derive the KKT condition. So this KKT condition is uh, some kind of constrained optimality conditions. For whatever uh, nonlinear program you have, there is a condition that a s optimal solution must satisfy. That would be the KKT condition. And then lastly, we will talk more about Lagrange duality. So you probably have some ideas about linear programming duality. Here we talk about another kind of duality, Lagrange duality. And we will somehow connect both of them. Okay, so let's start with some basic ideas about constraint optimization or constrained nonlinear programs. Suppose we have an unconstrained nonlinear programs. We do know how to deal with them. We have enough tools. We may determine whether the objective function is convex, right? Because we have first order derivative, second order derivative, um, gradient Hessian, whatever. Also, we may use the first order condition to find all those local minima. So pretty much, no matter whether your function is convex or not, we do have some systematic ways to deal with unconstrained nonlinear programs, as long as there is no constraint. But in practice, most of the problems do have constraints. Then we do need some other tools to deal with those uh, constrained optimizations. So you probably have some ideas that uh, for unconstrained nonlinear programs, we introduced these conditions. We also introduced algorithms, okay, gradient descent, Newton's method. For constrained nonlinear programs, indeed, we still have algorithms and conditions. In this lecture, we will focus more about conditions. Because for algorithms, uh, first, there are too many things to talk about, and in one lecture, we have no way to do that. And the second, this course is prepared to for you to understand more about theories so that's why we focus more on the analytical approach so when we have constraints of course we have the following strategy well how about this let's ignore all the constraints when something is uh, when we have something that we don't know how to deal with them uh, ignore them and then we have unconstrained problem we find a local minima and if it is feasible, then it is optimal. So that's something we may try. But unfortunately, in most cases, an unconstrained global minima is actually infeasible. We need to have some ways to deal with this situation. So let's take a look at one example. Let's start with our favorite single variate constraint optimization. Suppose we want to solve this problem. We want to minimize x square plus 2x minus 3 over the region where x is non-negative okay so graphically we can see it's like this so we have a curve like this and then we have a feasible region uh, over the region where x is non-negative so suppose we solve this problem so we have first order derivative second order derivative we can see that f is convex right because uh, the second order derivative is positive. And then the solution would be something satisfying the first order condition, which means our 2x plus 2 must be 0, our x must be negative 1. But this number, uh, this solution, x bar minus 1, uh, this guy is infeasible. So in this case, we need to somehow find some feasible solution that is optimal. From the graph, we can see that as we are minimizing this function over the feasible region, the best point is zero, okay, is zero. And also, zero is actually the closest feasible point to the un uh, infeasible first order point, okay? So among all those feasible points, there is a point that is closest 
to your unconstrained optimal solution. Okay, so is this a coincidence or this is always true? Uh, in many cases, this is always true. So you first solve for an unconstrained optimal solution. Suppose it is feasible, then you simply take a look at your feasible region and pick the one, pick the point that is closest to your infeasible first order point. Then that would give you an optimal solution. Uh, at least this is true for convex programs. Okay, so this would be nice, but if that works for single variate problems, let's take a look at multivariate problems. Suppose we have a multivariate problem, for example, this one. I now want to minimize f of x, which is x1 minus 2 square plus 4 times x2 minus 1 square. And in this case, it would be uh, not too difficult to see that if there is no constraint. Then for this problem, the optimal solution is for x1 to be 2 and x2 to be 1. Graphically, it will be here, okay? x1 is 2, x2 is 1. So, unfortunately, now we do have a constraint. x1 plus 2x2 should be less than or equal to 2. Well, so that's the feasible region here. And immediately you can see this uh, first order point is infeasible. So if that's the case, maybe we may play the trick again to try to find the closest feasible point. Okay, so in this case, it will be this point. I don't know who, which guy this is. But anyway, you go from 2, 1 and go straight along your constraint in the perpendicular uh, angle to your constraint boundary. That would give you the closest point, closest feasible point. Okay, so that's something we may do. But of course, using some kind of high school algebra, high school geometry, we also know that for this particular minimization problem, because this curve, if we uh, assign k or whatever constant to it, it actually gives you some kind of uh, rules, right? And then we know that an optimal solution, the minimum point that we may attempt is actually here, okay? So somehow that means, mm, well, the closest feasible point is actually not optimal. And that means we need a way to deal with those constraints. We cannot always just ignore it, find the unconstrained optimal solution, and then see whether it is feasible, or try to find the closest feasible point. We need to have some other ways to ignore those constraints, but not completely ignore them. That would be the topics for today.